everyone and welcome to daily newspaper analysis which is brought to you by Los Eco. So today is 8th March 2022 and I would like to wish you all firstly a very very happy and proud Women's Day to you and we really hope that with this day we will be able to secure what we are looking forward for all the women in this world, equality, happiness and all the good things in the world. So let's see what all we will be covering in today's newspaper articles. Uh, so firstly, we have this editorial from the Hindu newspaper. We have no article from the Indian Express today. So the title of this article from the Hindu is Sealed Cover Jurisprudence is Appalling. So basically, we will learn as to what do we understand by a sealed cover jurisprudence and why is it not encouraged in a society as transparent as we are looking forward to make ours? And why is it not really handy when it comes to the judicial outgivings as well? The second segment of this in newspaper analysis talks about the news update, which talks about the small news points which are important for a prelims exam. And finally, we'll be concluding with the legal news for the day. Let's see that why at all this entire article or this issue is into question. So recently, a judiciary, that is, we, we have to come to, you know, point that judiciary, that is a mute spectator to any executive action, highlights the democratic decay. So what happens is that recently there has been a ban that has been imposed on a channel that is a media one called channel and it is there in Kerala and the Kerala government has imposed ban on this media one channel. Now the reasons if we would ask that why at all this ban has been put up, the Kerala government has pointed out some security reasons. Now what are these security reasons have not been clarified. And both the single judge bench and the division benches of the High Court have sustained this particular ban. And there has been no clarification as to why at all this channel has been banned. Yes, of course, recently the Supreme Court has agreed to listen to the plea of this channel. And let's see what will be the judgment coming up. But here we understand about the concept of a sealed cover jurisprudence, which means that the decisions, the reasons that are actually behind the logic that has been used behind a particular decision, that remains sealed under cover. And if we talk about a society like India, a constitutional setup like India, wherein we put forward or we give importance to, you know, norms like the right to information and even, you know, freedom of speech and expression and other fundamental rights, we definitely ought to know the reason for anything that is going on. And government, it is actually definitely answerable to the people and it should be giving the right reasons behind its decisions. So let's see that why the approach by the court and the government is dangerous over here. Firstly, it says that the government has stated state security as the reasons of the ban, but it has not provided any clarification for the same. See, of course, we know that national defense and security, they come under Section 8, that is the ambit of uh, the uh, right, to, uh, right to Information Act, that is something under which we cannot seek information or information can be denied on these grounds. But generally speaking, if this is just, so just a general question of state security, at least some reasons can be given, you know, at least something that maybe the data is not safe with this a particular company or whatever could be the reason, but no clarification whatsoever has been given by the government for such ban. Now the jurisprudence of sealed cover, as we just learned, what is it? It is appalling, which is, means it is not at all uh, something appreciated and is an appalling trend and it blinds the judiciary, which holds the executive accountable. Now, we know that the judiciary, legislature and the executive, we talk about the separation of powers and we also talks about the system of checks and balances. Now, the judiciary can only question any kind of executive uh, action only if it knows the reasons behind it. Now, it doesn't even know the reasons. How can we really expect the judiciary to not turn blind towards it and to really take a good and effective action against it? So the Supreme Court has regularly held that judicial review and holding executive accountable is a pivotal part of the Constitution, as it was also reiterated many a times in the cases for Minerva Mills and also L. Chandra Kumar versus Union of India. So the judgment creates a dilemma because it recognizes the infringement of fundamental rights very clearly, yet it blocks any remedy. We will also see that which specific rights and fundamental rights are being hampered by this particular action. So the court has held that there are grave implications pointed out by security agencies, which are never pointed out to the broadcaster. But definitely there should be some point of information. And if at all, there is something wrong going on. So the broadcaster, the news channel, or anyone who is the stakeholder over here should definitely be given a chance to prove it right or wrong whatsoever be the case. Now let's see what are the rights that have been attacked because of this sealed cover jurisprudence. 
Firstly, the ban is a direct attack on the right to freedom of speech and expression. Now, as we know that the freedom of press very much falls under the ambit of Article 191A, that is a fundamental right and talks about freedom of speech and expression. So definitely when Media One, that's a press channel, it has been banned. So it is definitely a direct attack on the freedom of speech and expression. Secondly, the rights to association, occupation and business are also impacted, which are the other uh, right to freedom under Article 19, and also the right to form an informed view and take an informed decision is also impacted. So definitely we are looking forward to the Supreme Court that we're not saying that the ban should be uplifted as such or something. That's a different question altogether. What we are saying is that the reasons for the ban should be definitely put forward so that we as people can take informed decisions and that this is not some regime of some sealed covered jurisprudence and the opaqueness is not appreciated, rather transparency is appreciated. So here are a few other points that you can go through, but basically that was the crux of this entire thing. Now let's see what do we have for news updates today. Firstly, yes, of course, we have the International Women's Day, that is 8th March today. So International Women's Day is celebrated in many countries around the world. It is a day when women are recognized for their achievements without regard to divisions, whether national, ethnic, linguistic, cultural, economic, or political. This year, the theme of the day is gender equality for a sustainable tomorrow. Also, please remember that the National Women's Day in India is celebrated on 13th of February and International Women's Day is today, that is 8th of March. Second, DD News is now on the OTT platforms. So India's public service broadcaster announced that it has tied up with the OTT platform Yup TV to widen the reach of the Doordarshan India. As a result, the ministry believes that Doordarshan shall be able to put India's perspective at a global forum while showcasing India's values and culture. So that's a great news to know about. Next we have is Donate a Pension Scheme. So the Union Labor and uh, Employment Ministry launched the Donate a Pension Scheme that allows any citizen like you and me to pay the premium amount on behalf of an unorganized worker under the Pradhan Mantri Shram Yogi Mandhan Scheme. Please remember that Pradhan Mantri Shram Yogi Mandhan Scheme is one of the schemes that works for making lives better for the unorganized workers or the informal sector. And it actually works for making premiums and for making the entire pension plans for these workers so that after their retirement or after they are done with their employment, they have some amount to sustain themselves. So the scheme allows an unorganized worker to receive a monthly pension of rupees 15,000 by paying a premium of rupees 50 to 20 to 200 and that we can actually give them. Fourth, Indian women's uh, 25 uh, meter pistol team won gold. So Indian women's 25 meter pistol team of Rahi Sarnobat Isha Singh and Rhythm Sangwan won the gold medal by beating Singapore by 17-13 in the ongoing International Shooting Sport Federation World Cup in Cairo, that's in Egypt, yesterday. It is the fifth medal for India in the tournament. Let's completely uh, get on to the legal news now. So we have only one update for the day. Now, power to condone delay under Section 5 of the Limitation Act does not apply to suits, says the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court has observed that the power to condone delay, which is available under Section 5 of the Limitation Act, it is not applicable in the case of suits. Rather, it only applies to appeals and applications except ones made under Order 21 of the Civil Procedure Code. So this was all for the day. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Do like the session. Also, if you wish to download the PDF of today's slides, you can join our Telegram channel. The link is there in the description box below, or you can scan this QR code that you can see on your screens right now. Also, for other crisp and exam-oriented content, you may follow us on our official Instagram channels for Judiciary, CLAT Prep, UGC Net, as well as Law Finance exams. Thank you so much.